Hello, everyone. This is going to be a Motion Form broadcast by Motion Form founder Brandon Gibbs. And I'm going to uh, show you today making a house in three softwares. Um, first, SketchUp, then Rhino, then Revit. So you can see the difference of what's going on. In the screen right now, we have a audience a model, and we'll take her out, though it's useful to have her for scale orientation. We're just going to do a 10 by 10 by 10 house, and that is going to be in the U.S. feet. Hope you don't mind. It's going to be actually probably a little more of a cabin. First, we just draw lines. I'm just starting from the axes in SketchUp. If you're new to SketchUp, you just see that it's it's um, pretty intuitive. We have this the interface, and then we have our little icons for doing simple commands. A top icon doing similar. Uh, I've hidden the default tray, but the default tray is there that has like different settings. I'm just going to go ahead and make this house and it'll be very, very simple. Um, I'm going to go up 12 feet. And so there you go. I've had made this little cabin. And one of the things you do, uh, <clears throat> and I would say the command, pretty much you can make a shape and I'll make another one using the line command. Line command is here. And it automatically orients to that axis. And if you want to extrude something, you just uh, click on the surface. It automatically makes surfaces. Um, and you just choose a distance, which you can type in. You can see it in the lower right hand corner uh, right over here. And so that's what I used. And that's how I got my house over here. I triple clicked selecting and SketchUp is based off clicking in that way so I'm gonna go ahead and triple click uh, double click selects a face one click selects a line or a face itself um, this selects the line and the parts of it and triple click selects the all the lines that are connected and that will get really funny when it's um, connected to <laughs> intersecting planes we won't go into that today Okay, so I made this, and I'm going to make a simple house. Uh, after I make this into a group, and I just want to make this a group, which is just like group and other programs where you pretty much are not going to be touching it or moving things around. It's all one now. Okay, I'm going to make a 45 on 45 roof. And the way I'll do it this way is this actually is 5 feet. So I'm going to come up 5 feet, come over here. And one thing I want to do is probably come out 12 inches. Okay, it's trying to rotate. I don't need to rotate. I'm pressing L to do more lines. And what I want to do is create a basic Eve. Maybe, yeah, actually it's six. Six is already working for me. I'm going to select this line. I use control to select both of those. I press control to copy that line. So if you haven't used SketchUp, it's that easy. And uh, then I'm going to come over here so I can get my little piece on. And then I'm going to actually make this a group. And I'm going to do it really simple for myself. I'm going to extrude this. And it is an inference that connects it with that other face, so that was really helpful. I'm going to uh, come out 12 inch this side, 12 inch on this side, and this right here. I'm going to go ahead and just finish that out. And to make my life easier, I'm going to take all this, and now I'm going to move it with the M command. I'm going to mirror it. I'm pressing the scale button, but as opposed to scaling it, I'm just going to mirror it by clicking that middle button. You see the axis goes to the middle. Pressing negative one and enter. And then I'm putting this all back in here. And I have a basic house form. And that's my house in my first program. We just say that a house one. Now let's go into our second program, Rhino. Let's see what Rhino can do. Um, for some reason Rhino was being shy. 
Okay, so here we have Rhino. See, it's a much different interface. You see all four windows, but you can double click and have one to start with. Um, you're looking at the top front side and a perspective view, and you have your commands here at the top. Um, you can also uh, type in commands, which is cool. Um, it's a little bit like cat. Okay, so I want to have something that's 10 feet by 10 feet. I'm going to press zoom and E so you can see all my uh, zoom and the extents. Sorry. You can see all the things that you're typing in right here, which is cool. So I did make it a bit big. Uh, I can check my units. Something that's very important, of course, for precision. Um, this actually is in inches. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and extrude it up and I actually made a similar extrude command but it's called um, extrude curve and I just made a P for putting that in so it actually can do like in SketchUp uh, I just want to have my programs all look the same for some reason okay so I'm gonna put 12 feet up and there we go we have that particular surface and because it doesn't have sort of an intuitive as much if I just press L it will start doing a line but it, it's pretty much locked to an axis and, and that is part of what what happened when you say planar uh, it, you know it's it will um, focus on what plane you're dealing with so um, for me I just want to go ahead and um, uh, probably use a left right view just to make my life easier um, and it's doing that same thing where I go up five feet and now I just do this and I go 12 and 12 down and what we can do the same thing we were doing before only right now we're working in lines that aren't surfaces pretty much they don't naturally join I have to uniquely create a surface so these are still just lines I'm going to join them and then I'm going to come out here and I'll do my whole spill again with um, actually I'm going to move it then I'm going to use my shoot curve which I made as P and I'm actually since this house is 10 by 10 I'm gonna go 12 feet um, and I'm gonna move it back over because it went in the wrong direction alright you see all the commands that I'm typing up here um, I'm not trying to be convoluted okay and now that we have this I'm just going to mirror it you don't really see the mirror command in uh, SketchUp. Okay, so I have this, and one reason I actually should don't have this shape, but all I need to do is just do this. Unfortunately, it might not be planar, so you see it's actually not straight. So one of the things that Rhino has for straighting it, it's a very good surface tool, is uh, we're going to we're going to keep this to the C plane. So we're going to project it to the current plane. Yes, and then we're going to move that from wherever it is to the place where I want it to be, right here. And then we do that same extrude curve, and we're just going to do negative ten. I think that's in the right direction. And there we go. We look. And we have that house, that same house, 10 by 10 by 12 in Rhino. And let's say this is, uh, just put that in documents too. House 1. Okay, now let's look at how you would do this in Revit. And we're looking at the latest Revit. We're looking at, we've been looking at Rhino. 2000, actually uh, the fifth version, Rhino 5, but used uh, SketchUp 2020, and now this is Rhino 2020. We'll get 
Rhino, uh, this, we'll get Rhino 2020 soon. Okay, we'll just start a new project. And of course, it's a little more involved. Um, and this, the purpose of this is not to show which program is, is easier or cooler. It's just to look at these different programs and just see what do you think. Um, so you see the interface. It's a lot more architecture-based and all these things. It's a lot more information. It's, it's very much more building information modeling than just modeling. Um, though you can do that in all of these programs, actually. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is draw my walls so it's there's not really an extrusion method normally uh, I actually could do that uh, but I, I want to just show you that it you know since I'm making a house the most common used way okay so I'm drawing a line using the wall command so you see wall here you do wall door this would be simple um, I'm just going to start anywhere on one screen. You can see it's sort of snapping a little bit. I'm going to type in 10. And then I'm going to come back over here and type in 10. You can see it's straight. And it also does a little bit of that inference thing. And it shows the angle as well, which is cool. 10 feet. And then, you know, I don't even have to put 10. It just automatically connects. I press Escape. It has this. So one cool thing about Revit is now you just click on there's a model icon in the top default 3d view and you can see it already has made these 3d and as opposed to rescaling or anything I could just go into this information about the model right here this is uh, the properties tab and this is actually the project browser where you can look at the information inside um, so in the properties br um, browser I just put 12 and it's, it's going to be my 12 feet and let me do now, I want to do a roof. Now one of the things about doing something like a roof is it has to be done in a proper view. So it says uh, level two. Um, we'll show, look at the levels later. Um, I'm actually gonna do here. So uh, pretty much you, you're looking down on where your roof will be. So I'm gonna click here. And actually I, I can draw a roof or I can select the walls. So it's a little you know, more intelligent. So I just select this and this. We immediately have um, our lines of our roof. Now I want to do that same 12 foot overhang and 12 foot eave. Uh, the eave being where the slope is and the overhang, um, actually more like a rake, is where it is uh, not. So the flat face, the gable face. We'll look at that shortly. Uh, I'm actually going to remove the slope so sometimes uh, Revit makes automatic sloping and we don't want that because we're trying to make a gable roof which means it's triangulated on one side um, but since I connected to the walls it has this unique feature of overhang and actually I want to have all overhangs equal to one foot and I could do them all just straight from there um, as long as it doesn't screw up. <laughs> and don't worry, it's not going to crash. I just put one foot, press enter, and there it is. Um, it says it's at level two. We don't know exactly what level two means yet. Uh, we have the option to attach to walls. I'll say don't attach. We'll see what's going on here. You see that it's going through the wall. We want to have it going. Um, starting at 10 so I'm just actually instead of saying a level I will say uh, we'll move this down so we can see this so it's scrunched up in here uh, we want this to be at we're gonna go to uh, we're gonna make it a little more space here as well We're going to base it off of 10 feet, actually 12 feet. I just put in 12 and it already goes there. And one cool thing about Revit is I can select all these walls and these things in the back are the levels. I can select all these walls and click attach. And it will attach to the walls. And there you have it. Um, also the thickness, before I had it at 6 inches. 
Um, I could do something similar here, only you see that this is this is what's called a family and it has like types. I could go into this type and Revit is based on families for walls, families for windows and doors and I could just say um, this one currently generic is 12 inches so I could duplicate that just like that create my own and here just put 6 inches so this is where you start to can affect a feature and this is where you see that BIM this is actually can correlate to structural information, also material information. And so that's snips. And I click OK. And now we have this. This was done in Revit. And uh, we'll just look at the three versions again. So here we have the Revit house. Uh, here we have the Rhino House. Got to remember navigating these three programs. And finally, we have the SketchUp House. We have those similar features um, for each one. You've seen how to make it. You can make some informed decisions. Uh, these are all great software. The first important thing is always be able to do these sort of things by your hand if you're trying out before just getting stuck in the program but hopefully you've seen the program you like this again is branded with motion form uh, aiming to uh, explore the boundaries of parametrics of software and